we're going to talk about supplements and some of the NCAA guidelines and getting the right sort of information out there. Supplements are known as a derivative from any sort of plant or compound or herb that helps to add additional benefit to the diet. Um, they can come in many different forms, but some common ones that athletes are more familiar with are going to be like protein shakes, creatine, electrolytes, and maybe like pre-workout blends or caffeine. We'll get into those in detail. So you may have your own opinion about supplements, but we really need to reflect on the NCAA position since we are competing as NCAA athletes. And, you know, the first thing in their position statement is that any supplement could cause a positive drug test. Any supplement could be contaminated. So you need to understand that nothing is 100% guaranteed or safe. I mean, really nothing is, but especially with supplements. The second thing is that it is true that student athletes have tested positive for banned substances taking a supplement that they were maybe unaware contained that uh, banned substance or um, they just didn't know what they were taking in the first place. Many supplements contain banned ingredients. Now I'm not saying that most supplements do or that, um, that the most common ones that you see on the shelf at Walmart for example but especially if you start shopping online and you're going to uh, some of these more specialty supplement shops, you could be getting something that is laced with banned ingredients. And then finally, anytime you take a supplement, you do so at your own risk. The reason why I'm having this talk with you now is not because I am in support of you taking dietary supplements or against you taking dietary supplements. I know that you are doing this research on your own anyway. And I would like for you to get some correct information from me, from your dietitian, so that you can make an informed decision. I at least want you to feel comfortable coming to me so that we can talk about this if there is something that you want to take. The four banned substance groups, according to the NCAA, are going to be stimulants, anabolic agents, peptide hormones, and hormones and metabolic modulators. So things like um, Adderall or amphetamines and uh, steroids or any sort of pre-hormone is going to be automatically a banned substance. Keep that in mind. You can look at the list um, of all of these ingredients that are available on the NCAA website and you should familiarize yourself with them if you plan on taking supplements. Not all supplements are guaranteed pure. The government does not have the uh, type of interaction with these companies to guarantee that that is exactly what you're getting when you're looking at the food label. Now, some supplements are going to be, I'm going to have more confidence in than others. And those are going to be ones that have labels of third party testing. It means that another company has come in taken samples and tested it in their labs to make sure that this is what is on the label. And some of those stamps of purity you can see here on this PowerPoint. Some of my favorite ones are the informed choice or the informed sport um, label that will be on there, but also you can look for the NSF label as well. Those are the kind of two to three most common ones that you'll find. Now remember that this doesn't guarantee purity, it just means that it's been third party tested and I'm a lot more confident in supplements that have these on the labels than ones that don't. Let's talk about some common supplements that may be beneficial for you as a student athlete. The first one is going to be whey protein. If you find yourself trying to be vegetarian or you just don't get a lot of protein or maybe you're Standard breakfast has no protein in it, which you should know better. We've talked about that. But you could do a whey protein supplement. It's just a convenient way of getting in more protein. There's nothing special about it outside of it's convenient, it's usually cheap, and it's easy. So there are some common brands. Muscle Milk, Optimum Nutrition is what we currently use at the APC. These are some things that you may want to consider um, if you want to add a little bit extra to your current nutrition plan. So whey protein, 
would be my number one choice if you want to take a supplement. The next common supplement you may want to consider is creatine monohydrate. It is a supplement that gives you more energy in your muscles to push harder in the weight room and for sprinting. Um, the, the way that you would want to take it is, is what's called creatine monohydrate. Make sure that that's exactly what it says on the label. It has nothing less or nothing more. You can see here on this slide, here's a couple of brands that I currently recommend that have those third-party seals of purity on them. Caffeine is a tricky one. It's tricky because it is beneficial. We all know the power of caffeine, especially as a student, if you've had some before studying. It increases your alertness and it makes you feel more awake. Um, this could translate into you pushing yourself harder on the court um, or during practice. The caveat of this is if you take a caffeine dose that is too high, it is either going to be harmful for you, it could dehydrate you, and it could also make you pop positive on a drug test. So a good rule of thumb to follow is never to consume over 200 milligrams of caffeine in one serving. So here are some supplements that also have a third party seal um, sorry, a third party testing for purity on them. But really the easiest way to ingest caffeine would be to have a cup of coffee or a big cup of tea. And you can use this about 30 minutes before practice or training to give yourself a little bit of a boost. Never, never, never do anything in competition if you have not been trying it consistently in practice. That goes for caffeine, that goes for different snacks, that goes for wearing a different pair of sneakers. Um, but caffeine is something that a lot of my athletes either really, really love or they could just do without. I want you to be informed here and make an informed and good decision if you are going to do that. What you can see here a little bit more about caffeine is that if you ingest a very, very high amount of caffeine, it can um, you know, pop you in a drug test if you are tested. However, this is a really, a really high amount. It's about eight cups of coffee you know, that you would have like an hour before competition. Um, most people won't drink eight cups of coffee and that's good. But it could happen that if you had a couple of highly concentrated supplements that had a lot of caffeine in them, let's say you drank a bang energy drink and you had a scoop of pre-workout, then yeah, that could possibly uh, pop you on a drug test. But also you should know that if you did have that much caffeine, you would probably feel like you were having a heart attack and your anxiety would be going through the roof. I would never recommend somebody sit down and have, you know, six to eight cups of coffee in one serving that will simply negatively affect your athletic performance. So I hope that you never feel the need to even go close to there. All right, moving on to the more vanilla stuff, we have multivitamins and a multivitamin is a great supplement to take if your nutrition isn't perfect. And I know it isn't, but that's okay. We can get in our vitamins and minerals, kind of like a insurance policy to make sure that you're never getting deficient. Most one a day vitamins are just fine and you can find one that works for you or I can recommend one for you. Fish oil is another great supplement and I recommend it if you want to take something that will reduce inflammation in your joints, improve your mental cognition and improve your heart health. Now these things could be small, small effects that happen over a long period of time, but if you're a competitive athlete, those small effects start making a difference. Uh, fish oil is something that you can get by eating fatty fish like salmon a couple times a week, but we're not serving that in the calf, so you'd probably have to take it through a supplement. Uh, the GNC Triple Strength, Barling's Fish Oil, or Nordic Naturals are all brands that I recommend that are good sources of fish oil. Anytime you want to take a supplement, get the conversation started either with your sports dietitian, with your strength coach, or with your athletic trainer. Let them know before you buy it, please. A lot of times athletes come to me after they've purchased something 
you know, if I tell you that it's not good to take, then you've already spent your money. Let us help you out in this decision-making process. So finally, some things to remember from the little supplement talk that we had was get your information from the right sources. Look for those seals of purity on the label. Some substances can and even will result in a ban and check with your strength coach, dietitian, and athletic trainer before you plan on taking any supplements. Last thing we're going to talk about today is team support. So I'm going to ask you the question, how can we help each other with nutrition? So when we talk about this together, we're going to discuss this as a team in kind of a guided exercise, but some things I want to just throw out to you for your consideration. Upperclassmen, could you encourage your younger teammates on the importance of eating and um, in making the most out of meal time? Could you guys collaborate on grocery shopping or meal planning so that you can help your teammates and your roommates out? Uh, could you share your nutrition goals with other people and then check in on those goals with your teammates to make sure that you know you guys are staying on top of what you need to be eating as an athlete. Um, you could share snacks with people before practice. I want you to stay positive about this and I want you to focus your comments and your encouragement on performance, not on body size. Making, making it about eating and getting enough energy before practice. Don't make comments about people's weight or about how big or small they are. They know that already. Positive encouragement is the level of support that I want you guys to give each other as teammates. Well, that wraps it up for our talk about changing your body composition, gaining weight, uh, gaining muscle, losing fat, planning it all out throughout the year, looking at supplements with a critical eye and making the right decisions for yourself as a student athlete. And then finally here on our last slide, talking about team support and being a leader within the team and setting an example of what we should be eating for the younger teammates that we have, sharing your goals and offering positive encouragement. So that wraps it up for today, but stay tuned. We'll have more sports nutrition information for you coming on the videos or in person, or if I see you at the APC, there's no escape. We're going to get you on the right path.